Okay, good morning from uh, Cambodia. Uh, today we are having uh, a guest speaker from the United States uh, with us. His name is Andy, and good evening uh, in the United States. Uh, <laughs> good evening. It's yeah. 11 p.m. over here right yeah. now. Andy, could you introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, where are you now in the United States? Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, certainly. Um, so I am an engineering art double major at Swarthmore College in the United States. Um, our school has sadly been shut down because of the coronavirus epidemic, well, pandemic. Um, and right now I'm staying with uh, a few friends at Alexandria, Virginia. Um, yeah. Andy, could you tell us a little bit about your uh, Swarthmore College. I mean, before you make it, to, before you made it to Swarthmore College, uh, what did you? Do? How did you apply for college? And what what were the things that you did that you had to do in order to make it to college in the United States? Sure, sure. So uh, Swarthmore College is a um, small liberal arts college in uh, Pennsylvania, close to like Philadelphia or so. And it has about 1,500 students, and it's one of the few liberal arts stu uh, schools, especially one of the top liberal arts schools with a engineering program. Mm -hmm. So that was part of why I chose it. Another reason I chose it was because they have a good reputation for meeting 100% 100 of your financial aid needs. Mm -hmm. So if you get in and you have a sort of like uh, financial requirement to get there, yeah. um, they will help you pay for the remainder. remainder. Okay. Okay. Andy, when, when and, you apply for college, uh, sorry, I had to cut. When you apply for college, oh, yes. did yes. you have to write anything uh, for college application? Um, yes, yes. Um, I applied for Swarthmore and about 20 other colleges uh, wow. through the um, Common App. Um, and it required me to write a personal statement. And for nearly every single college, I had to submit some sort of writing sample, be it like a short answer response or full essays or a few full essays. Every college that you apply to require uh, essays, uh, require, co I, mean, I mean, application essays, right? Well, not all of them, not all of them, but uh, some of them don't require any essays, mm -hmm. but you still need to submit a personal uh, a personal statement regardless um, to even apply to a single college. So there has to be an initial personal statement that is the same for all of your applications, hence the name common application. And uh, the college, it's the college's choice whether they want to ask for anything else or not. So out of 20 colleges that you apply to, how many college did you get accepted to over there? Ah, like 14. 14? <laughs> there was a lot of rejections. 14 college, colleges out of 20 colleges in the United States. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I mean, could you raise a few college, I mean, a few colleges that you wanted to go in, to get in, but then you could not get in the top one, but you made it to what's, what's, which uh, stage uh, did you make it? Uh, to those colleges? Well, for a few colleges, I made it to the uh, wait list. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually only got interviews for one college, um, MIT, but I did not get any further. Okay. Um, now, did you apply to Harvard? I did. Then and I got rejected. Did you get to? Did you get to I got rejected stage? straight up. Straight to the what, interview? Yeah. Um, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't arrange for an interview on time. Okay, but then you did. Uh, you were in the waiting like, list for MIT, which was, which was a uh, the number one college uh, universities in the United States. Okay, could you tell us since uh, today's uh, session is about writing, you want to know the importance of writing. How is writing uh, important? I mean, how? How, are write, how is writing important for those who want to apply to college in their country? 
uh, like yourself, who apply to a college or different colleges in the United States? Well, um, to answer that question, I, uh, I'd have to ask the viewer to consider one question, like, um, who are you? See, most of the colleges that are desirable to apply to, whether it be for prestige or academic programs or whatever choice you have, it's, um, they look at your application with a holistic view, which basically means that they look at your applications through uh, the lens of you in order to interpret your achievements, your statistics. Mm -hmm. So the essays that you write, especially the personal statement, is extremely important in setting up how they view you. So, for example, you could be like someone from Cambodia <laughs> with, uh, who does not have the necessary uh, structure, in, uh, educational infrastructure to do things like joining debate teams or robotics clubs and you have to like sort of talk about it in your personal statement so the yeah. admissions committee can understand that and so they can like uh, judge you to the best of their abilities because there can be situations where you are put in a disadvantageous, a, a disadvantageous position through your life and you have to uh, show it to them and so they can rate you basically in terms of like whether you should be given a more um, leniency or just more credit for what you've managed to achieve despite your disadvantageness okay. in comparison to someone else from a more privileged background. Mm -hmm. So I believe that writing skills are the skills that allow you to be able to express yourself to the college committee when you apply mm -hmm. uh, during the application process. Okay, so let's let's get straight uh, to your life as an engineering student. Uh, how does, I mean, what roles do writing play in your academic uh, uh, journey in your uh, college as an engineering yeah, student? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great question. Like, so people don't normally think of the STEM disciplines. By STEM, I mean like uh, science, technology, engineering, math, um, as a sort of uh, discipline where you would have to use a lot of writing skills, but it's actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, when you take STEM, you have to do a lot of writing, based, uh, mostly in terms of lab reports. And... This is important because with every subject you take, whether it be enge engineering, math, biology, chemistry, you have to write in a different style, mm -hmm. which is like the style that that specific subject wants you to write. Mm -hmm. So the way that you learn to write in engineering is not acceptable in chemistry. They might ask for things like, um, they want you to write specifically about the methods mm -hmm. of your experiments in mm -hmm. say um, engineering. They want you to elaborate a lot further in engineering mm -hmm. yeah. than in chemistry, where they would want you to um, focus more upon like your understandings of the results. Mm -hmm. And for example, a subject like physics um, is not as, uh, doesn't require you to be as thorough, thorough about like the materials used, the methods, the findings, etc., and be more wanting for you to express like an understanding instead. Mm -hmm. While whereas for something like again engineering, mm -hmm. um, want you to express the method more importantly than the result. Mm -hmm. So you can see that uh, writing for different discipline. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's uh, writing in each discipline is different from one another. How does writing foundation, your lessons, your foundational uh, lessons from your high school, that, I mean, the writing skill that you learn from high school, how does it help for you to be able to write in engineering school or college? Well, um, <laughs> that's actually very funny because um, I have seen and partnered with a lot of people on engineering labs mm -hmm. who are 
unable to write with proper grammar and mm. um, in a way that's actually captivating to read. Mm. Um, of course, like with engineering, uh, there's less leeway for you to be captivating. You don't want to have to necessarily be like grabbing their attention, mm -hmm. but uh, there are ways of laying out um, sentences mm -hmm. so that they're not tiring and tedious to read. Mm -hmm. And it's harder for you to understand the subtleties of that without mm -hmm. having a good grounding in basic writing. Mm -hmm. But, then, but um, then, yeah, you may proceed further. Sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah, that, that was about it. <laughs> but then if, if you look at writing, right? If we talk about writing, it's important to make our audience understand our messages properly. So we have to have the ability to make people understand what we are going to convey in mm -hmm. our writing. But then how is it important for you to be able to convey the clear message in your engineering reports? It's very important <laughs> uh, because um, the core ethos of doing an engineering report, especially in college, is not showing, it's not like evaluating the uh, results mm -hmm. so much as showing the method by which you do it. And the professor has to be able to understand how you think and how your group thought and how you chose specific ways to test or to construct a certain test mm -hmm. so that they can see whether you understand the purpose of the method used or not. The main purpose of engineering lab reports is to practice your abilities to evaluate. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question. I believe uh, this is my final question uh, for today's session. A lot of students, either at your age, if I imagine that I just finished high school, I might uh, take time to prepare for your uh, for science subjects or science related subjects if I wanted to go to engineering. But then, do you think I should prepare? I should uh, gain sufficient writing skill before I go to engineering school, or I can just start it. I can just start to learn writing when I already get admitted to an engineering school. <laughs> I, I would say that you would want to learn writing before you get admitted to an engineering school. Because as I've, as I've said before, I have had a lot of lab partners who mm -hmm. lack basic punctuation, grammar, uh, mm -hmm. sentence structure skills. Um, it's the most infuri infuriating thing to have a partner that cannot write. And then you, you have to like work upon their writing, edit theirs as well. Mm -hmm. So in the interest of not uh, alienating your classmates and potentially getting lower scores on your lab reports, um, I think you should learn writing before. Because usually these lab reports account for close to 40 to 50% of your lab grades, right. oh, of your whole grade, yeah. So it means that if you cannot write properly, it will affect the score on the lab report. It's even more important than exams. Okay, okay. Andy, uh, this is uh, really my last question. Do you have any remarks, uh, remark that you want to deliver, or you have any message that you want to uh, tell uh, the audience and those who listen to this particular session today? Sure, sure. And this is more of a practical thing than. Uh, mm -hmm uplifting inspirational speech but um, another really important part and of being able to write is applying for grants and internships um, in the United States especially the culture of it is that you go to college for roughly nine months and the other three months is a summer vacation where you usually in order to get competitive in your application for jobs get an internship of some sort and this it requires good writing skills just to sort of sell yourself. And it's, it's good practice for later on yeah. when you're interviewing for jobs and stuff. Um, so 
beyond just getting into college and excelling at academics, writing is also good for you to apply for, say, uh, opportunities for yourself, even like fellowships, grants, and stuff like that. Stuff to pad out your resume. Okay. So thank you so much, Andy, for spending time with us today. We hope that if you have a chance to come to Cambodia anytime soon, our uh, audience on writing 1.0 will have a chance to present. Okay. Uh, have a nice day. Okay. Stay thank safe you. in the United States. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.